The Jehovah's Witnesses are a far more subtle cult in many ways than Mormonism, but their ideas will be recognisable to you if you've come this far in the series. The Jehovah's Witnesses were founded by a man called Charles Taze Russell in the late 19th century, and the first thing to say about him is that he believed that lying was a good thing if the end justified the means. This has been a recurring theme throughout the series that we've seen in relation to Plato, Islam and the Illuminated Masons in particular. Their own publication, the Watchtower magazine, stated on May 15, 1960 that the scriptures justify the war strategy of hiding true facts from the enemy. The following month, on June 1, 1960, it repeated the idea, saying, As a soldier of Christ, he is in theocratic warfare, and he must exercise caution when dealing with God's foes. Thus the scriptures show that for the purposes of protecting the interests of God's cause, it is proper to hide the truth from God's enemies. Because Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe anyone outside of their cult has true salvation, that means that Christians are included along with the enemies of God in their eyes. That means they believe it is acceptable to lie to us if the end justifies the means. This instantly removes any weight we may have otherwise given to their words, and we have to instead look at their actions, ideas and symbols for the truth. Charles Taze Russell was a member of a congregational church as a youth, but in his teens he lost faith and, hungrily, he began investigating the heathen religions in search of the truth on God's purpose and man's destiny. He picked up many occult ideas and intermingled them with his own faith, and also gained a number of Masonic friends. Although there is much debate about how involved he was with Freemasonry and whether he was a Mason himself, what is clear is that he exalted Masonic beliefs and used occult images in his own publications. In a discourse he gave in 1913 called The Temple of God, he said, I am very glad to have this particular opportunity of saying a word about some of the things in which we agree with our Masonic friends, because we are speaking in a building dedicated to Masonry, and we are also Masons. I am a Freemason. I am a free and accepted Mason, if I may carry the matter to its full length, because that is what our Masonic brethren like to tell us, that they are free and accepted Masons. That is their style of putting it. I trust we all are, but not just after the style of our Masonic brethren. We have no quarrel with them. I am not going to say a word against Freemasons. In fact, some of my very dear friends are Masons, and I can appreciate that there are certain very precious truths that are held in part by our Masonic friends. I have talked to them at times, and they have said, How do you know about all of these things? We thought nobody knew anything about these things except those who had access to the very highest logic. Russell went on to use a Masonic name for God, saying, I had been in conference with the great master workman, the Lord himself, and I have secret information. And so, if we talk to our Masonic friends about the temple and its meaning, and about being good Masons, and about the Great Pyramid, which is the very emblem they use, and what the Great Pyramid signifies, our Masonic friends are astonished. We are going to discuss free and accepted Masonry, the Bible Masonry, my dear friends. In both those quotations, his Masonic friends seem surprised that Charles Russell knows the same information they do. This goes further when Russell says, You know our order is so secret we cannot know each other always. Is that not wonderful? I find that it is so with Masons also. Many Masons shake hands with me and give me what I know is their grip. They don't know me from a Mason. Something I do seems to be the same as Masons do. I don't know what it is but they often give me all kinds of grips and I give them back. Then I tell them I don't know anything about it except just a few grips that have come to me naturally. Russell seems to be saying that somehow he knows about Freemasonry, but he doesn't know how he knows. It just comes naturally to him. But he then goes on to say that he, in fact, knows more about occult things than Freemasons themselves do. Do our Masonic friends understand something about the Temple and being Knights Templar and so on? We more. This next quotation from that discourse is very telling indeed. Blessed are your eyes, for they see. Not everybody has the hearing ear and the seeing eye. It is only those who have come into this divine masonry that have this spiritual insight and this spiritual guidance and may know the things that are freely given to us. It is something that is freely given to one class and not intended for anyone else. Russell therefore had no problems in his followers joining Masonry, saying, 
If you feel that you want to become a member of the free and accepted order of masonry and do not feel free and masonic enough as a follower of Christ, God bless you. Use your own judgment. That is yours to decide, not mine. Finally, he said, so you and I as under masons are waiting for the return of the master mason. Therefore, we are unsurprised when we find this winged sun disk symbol, which was prevalent on early watchtower publications. Here we also see it on their Kingdom Hall in Queens, New York. I am led to believe that this too has recently been taken down as it was starting to cause too much controversy. Early issues of the Watchtower had this front cover, which has a bit of sun symbolism, although nothing especially incriminating. The Watchtower with the illuminating light coming from the top also hints at the old Babylonian tower theme, but it's presented as a kind of lighthouse rather than a ziggurat. This seems to me to be the subtlety of the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's like Russell was constantly hinting at occult ideas and dancing around them, but disguising them or distancing himself just enough for them to avoid incrimination. Further research will tell you that the other symbols here, particularly the cross and crown, may have deeper meanings, but because they're not connected to anything I've covered so far, I'll bypass them and leave you to do your own investigation there. The whole Jehovah's Witnesses organization are controlled by a governing body of 10 to 15 mature men who they believe receive direct guidance from the spiritual realm. The governing body then instructs the followers through the pages of the Watchtower publications and these decrees are enforced by elders within local assemblies. We're basically talking about a power hierarchy here where those at the top claim spiritual authority to enforce their temporal authority. Jehovah's Witnesses are taught that scripture alone is insufficient to understand the things of God and that they need the teachings of the governing body as passed down through the watchtower to properly understand the Bible. They say, Jehovah God has also provided his visible organization, his faithful and discreet slave, made up of spirit anointed ones. Unless we are in touch with this channel of communication that God is using, we will not progress along the road to life no matter how much Bible reading we do. They teach that people are not to think for themselves, but are to rely upon this hierarchy for true knowledge, saying, But a spirit of independent thinking does not prevail in God's organization, and we have sound reasons for confidence in the men taking the lead among us. There are similarities here to the Catholic Church and all the pagan hierarchies in that they try to keep control by teaching their followers to develop a dependency on the hierarchy for truth and not to think for themselves. Also like Catholicism, they strengthen that control by saying that if anyone goes against their teaching, they will be removed from the fellowship and therefore will lose their salvation. The use of guilt and fear to control the followers is enough to keep them towing the party line. Anyone who has tried to leave will know how controlling an organization it really is. Jehovah's Witnesses are also expected to spy on one another and report any misdemeanors to the elders. If they don't, they run the risk of being disfellowshipped themselves. People can be disfellowshipped for such things as speaking to a disfellowshipped person and reading material that hasn't been approved by the governing body. So in that, we see the same old attempts to keep a firm grip on the information flows. Those information flows say that Jesus Christ is not God. Jesus Christ is a created being. The Archangel Michael is a God. That Christ's body was not resurrected and that the Christian church is not preaching the gospel. Why do the Jehovah's Witnesses have so many doctrines that are in common with the doctrines of demons? Well, as I mentioned, their governing body believes it is experiencing direction from the spiritual realm. They believe that direction to be angelic. Vindication, Volume 3 says, The heavenly messengers or angels of the Lord now used by the Lord in behalf of the remnant. These angels are invisible to human eyes and are there to carry out the orders of the Lord. No doubt they first hear the instruction which the Lord issues to his remnant and then these invisible messengers pass such instruction on to the remnant. Raymond Franz, an ex-member of the governing body, confirmed in his book, Crisis of Conscience, that they made decisions not on the Bible or by prayer, but by this angelic direction. They claim these angels also direct the writing of the Watchtower magazine. The Lord used the Watchtower to announce these truths. Doubtless he used his invisible deputies to have much to do with it. 
On top of this, they practiced necromancy, communication with the dead, as they claimed that Charles Russell continued to contact them after death to guide the organization. Though Pastor Russell has passed beyond the veil, he is still managing every feature of the harvest work. We hold that he supervises, by the Lord's arrangement, the work yet to be done. Also, Hence our dear pastor, now in glory, is without doubt manifesting a keen interest in the harvest work and is permitted by the Lord to exercise some strong influence thereupon. The watchtower has made numerous false prophecies and set wrong dates that have come and gone. They have mistranslated the Bible, endorsed things like numerology, spiritism, necromancy, astrology and masonry. Clearly, whatever they are in contact with is not from God. Finally, this is a close-up of the inscription on Charles Taze Russell's grave. You may be surprised to see what kind of shape this grave takes. What is also significant is that there's a building in the background, and if we were to walk down the slope to the foot of the flagpole, we would see this. This is the Greater Pittsburgh Masonic Centre. I need to keep repeating that no human beings are our enemies and that these individual organizations are not our enemies. Keep looking beyond the princes of Tyre to see the king of Tyre. Our enemies are spiritual, not physical.